Right, hello and welcome to the Oxford Renewables Therminator 2 instruction video. This video is intended to make you feel more comfortable using your Therminator and uh, it's to give you an idea of all the parts on the boiler and um, let you know how to clean the machine and uh, keep it in tip-top operating condition. So I'll start off by um, showing you the parts of the boiler. Here we have a Therminator 2. This is a 60 kilowatt model. You can see the size of the boiler by looking at the boiler plate which is on the inside here. The Therminator also comes in a 49 kilowatt version which is essentially the same machine but reduced in power through certain tweaks to the software. There's a 40 kilowatt machine which has a different chassis, it's a slightly smaller machine. And there's a 22 kilowatt machine which is again one size smaller. Now what you see in the video today goes for all those uh, all those boilers within that series. So um, if you've got a 22 kilowatt, then uh, don't switch off now. There's plenty to be learned here. So this is the uh, the front door of the boiler. Um, it also includes the touchscreen display, the Eco Manager. Um, by pressing on this, we can access different parts of our heating system and tell the boiler to do various things. I'm not going to dwell on that now because uh, we have another video that shows you how to uh, interact with that. So if I open the door again, you will see in here we have two further doors. We have a top door, which is the burn chamber where you put your logs into the machine. Have a quick squiz in here if you like. We've got the secondary air flap here, which is uh, operated by a servo in the corner. Uh, that, you won't see that operating in pellets mode, that only really kicks in when you're burning logs. Finally, this lower door is the combustion chamber door, or the ash chamber door. Uh, it's got a little peep hole here, so that you can watch the flames licking down from the grate. It is a down burning appliance, so uh, in contrary to conventional flames, you'll see them uh, pointing downwards, which is quite exciting. Uh, if I open this door, you can see what's inside, and we can see a small amount of ash. It's quite a capacious chamber, so uh, you shouldn't need to empty it more than once a month. Right. The Therminator 2 boiler is a combination boiler in that it will burn both logs and pellets. There are a variety of fuel feed systems that you can install with a Therminator boiler. What we have here is a intermediate pellet store. Now these intermediate pellet stores can come with a flip top lid so that you can pour bagged fuel into them. But this one here is connected to a large pellet store, which you can see in the background. The intermediate pellet store, in this case, has a vacuum turbine inside. We can't see it now, it's hidden behind this plate. So that the intermediate store is able to communicate with the boiler, there is a sensor here. This proximity sensor is able to tell when the store is full and you'll actually see a little LED glow here uh, when it is full and when that LED comes on the vacuum turbine will stop and the machine will be ready to go. You should never see the boiler fill itself when it's burning that's uh, a safety feature that just doesn't happen. This is the boiler insert auger, which pulls the pellets from the bottom of the intermediate store up and drops them down into the machine. You, when it's working, you can see the tip of it rotating there. 
and this is a safety device, this is the feeder temperature sensor. So if I take the red cover off the boiler, we can see what's underneath. There's only really one component under the red cover and that is the boiler's power module. This is where all the components of the boiler are controlled and also in certain circumstances pumps and mixers connected with the heating circuits. Moving further down towards the back of the machine, if I take the rear lid off, the first thing that we spot is an array of motors. Uh, the 60 and the 49 kilowatt boilers have a total of nine motors in the array. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And each motor is connected to a gearbox, which is in turn connected to the turbulator. Now the turbulator is a strip of metal which has uh, flaps on either side. This acts to turbulate the combustion gases as they pass through the machine, ensuring nearly complete heat transfer. The other purpose of this component is to rotate and scrape the walls of the heat exchanger, thus ensuring continued high combustion efficiencies between services of the boiler. This array of motors operates automatically on a timed basis, which the eco-manager controller is in charge of. So as well as these motors under here, we've got some other important components. Connected to this cable here, we have the lambda sensor. The lambda sensor is a device which measures the amount of residual oxygen in the flue gases and the boiler uses this information to ensure consistently high combustion efficiencies by creating the, right, the correct mix of fuel and air. Another component that we can see here is the boiler temperature sensor. Obviously the boiler will uh, control itself based on, on this temperature. We can also see two bimetallic thermostats. So these thermostats operate with or without power. And uh, this one here with the um, corrugated sheath on it is uh, a safety device. Uh, this opens a cold main connection to the back of the boiler which will run through a coil inside the boiler jacket and cool the boiler down in the event of an over temperature situation. These situations are likely to occur if there's a power cut when the uh, boiler's running on logs for example. The other thermostat that we can see here is the uh, over temperature safety cutout thermostat which is connected to a button at the front of the boiler that I'll show you shortly. So we have the boiler's induced draft fan which draws the air into the boiler and leaves the products of combustion at a standstill at the back of the boiler. This is why it's very important to have adequate fluing for the machine, a minimum of four and a half meters straight flue to ensure at least five pascals of draw at the back of the boiler. We can see the flue gas temperature sensor here. We can see the power connection to the back end protection pump, the shunt pump which sends water around the buffer store and the boiler. This component here is the over temperature valve which is operated by a thermostat inside the boiler body and it flushes cold water around the boiler to cool it in the event of an over temperature situation. So the cold main will be connected on this side and there's a connection that you can't see behind it where the very hot water comes out of the boiler if that ever goes off. Other, other components at the back of the boiler are the boiler drain plug and the boiler return temperature sensor. So as well as ensuring that the flue has adequate draw for the machine, it's very important that the flue has a draft stabiliser. This draft stabiliser will operate 
in the event of wind passing across the top of the chimney to allow air to come into the flue and maintain a steady draw at the back of the boiler. The other important component in the flue is of course access for cleaning. It's important that the flues for solar focus boilers are swept twice a year and in order to facilitate this adequate cleaning access must be available. This component here is very important. This is the back end protection module. It includes a pump and a mixing valve. The mixing valve being controlled by the boiler to prevent very cold water going back to the boiler. Last but not least, we have the boiler safety group which has three components in it. It has a pressure gauge, an automatic air valve and an over temperature and over pressure release valve which is going to drain down here. This component here is the boiler's ignition system. It's a uh, hot air blower that blows air at over 400 degrees onto the, just above the grate to ignite the pellets. The electrical connection is made here. In the case that you experience an over temperature event with the boiler, the boiler will ask you to press the thermostatic reset button. I'll just show you what that is, that's just here. You have to screw the black cap off, take it away to reveal a green button underneath. and You need to push that button in with a bit of stick or a biro or something like that. You'll only be able to reset the machine once the boiler's temperature has dropped below 80 degrees. Mm -hmm.